it's February 2nd and my garden is already being attacked by aphids. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to deal with those early so that way we have a successful and healthy plant throughout spring and summer. In one of my other videos, I showed you how to make Jadam wetting agent or also known as Castile soap. And I'll go ahead and link this uh, up in the corner so that way you can watch that video on how to make this. That way you don't have to spend a lot of money on buying it from a store because what you're mainly buying is liquid and you can buy the ingredients and make it yourself and make a lot of this for really, really cheap. We're gonna take some of this Jadam wetting agent and we're actually gonna use this on the aphids to smother them. So if you look, you can actually see that there are ants all over this as well. And they're carrying those aphids around. They're called black bean aphids. And I've had them before in the garden. And the way I've dealt with them is by using my Jadam wetting agent. And I use it at a one ounce or 30 milliliters to one gallon of water. For me, that works really well. But the ants are a little bit tougher and they're able to wipe themselves of the smothering agent. So I typically have to go to 60 milliliters for every one gallon in order to kill the ants and the aphids. The ants want the aphids to suck out all of the sap from the plants because they want the, the honeydew that the aphids excrete. That's what the ants actually like drinking. So the ants have an incentive to keep the aphids alive and that's why they're moving them around and they're, they're essentially farming them. So we need to make sure that we also kill the ants for this reason, because they will go and try to clean off the aphids to move them around and to get the, the smothering agent off of them. Now this wetting agent, this soap that we're gonna use for smothering, it does a great job at killing ants as well, but it doesn't actually take care of the root problem when it comes to ants. Ants have a colony and this is going to stop them where they are and smother them to death. So this won't actually eliminate the ant colony, just the ants that get sprayed with it. Right here is my organic pest sprayer. This is the same sprayer I use all the time whenever I'm using my Jadam wetting agent because I wanna be careful not to use this on any, when I need to spray down my worm bins. I don't wanna be spraying this onto my worms. So and be sure to label your stuff so that way you know what you're using it for. Now to get the best results from using the wetting agent, you actually wanna use soft water. If you have hard water and there's calcium in it, it reacts with this wetting agent and will actually cause it to bind with the calcium. And then that will lead to it not being as effective as it should be. So it's important to use soft water. Otherwise, if you're not, you're gonna end up using a lot more of this wetting agent in order to get the same results. You should experiment and see if I wanna start out with one ounce for every gallon and spray your plant and see if the aphids die. If they don't, then you come back in a couple of days and try two ounces and see how that works. And you work your way up incrementally until you figure out what's the right dosage with your hard water for killing off these insects. Now you can actually make specific insecticidal soaps depending on the pest you're targeting. So I know like ants don't like basil. So I could take basil and crush that up and make an extract out of it with a little bit of water and really grind up the basil to get out all of that uh, aroma that basil puts out. And then I could mix that into this water. Now in the other video I make where I talk about making the Jadam wetting agent, you can actually take the vegetable oil and you can cook either lavender, basil, or any of these other um, plants that repel insects. And you can actually cook with it to get all of that aroma into the oil in the beginning. And then you can make your soap. So that way you have soap that smells like lavender or any of these other fragrances. I typically like to add mine after depending on the pest. That's why I make the plain version. And if I need to, I can go ahead and add in basil, lavender, lemongrass or any of those things to help repel a specific pest. All right, all I'm doing now is just mixing this up, making sure that the wetting agent is thoroughly dissolved into my water. And then we're gonna go ahead and spray. You should be careful with this though, because the soap is very slippery. If you say have an herb garden on your concrete patio, 
you want to be careful of spraying this and not getting it on the concrete because the next time it rains or there's excess water it will be pretty slippery so you want to think about that with where you're spraying this all right so we're just going to go ahead and spray this on and you want to make sure that you're doing a good job of covering the entire plant and definitely check the bottom side of the leaves because the aphids will hide on the bottom side to keep themselves protected and you want to smother out all the aphids and ants in one shot because this wetting agent is alkaline over a long period of time and if you used a lot of it you would see results of your soil becoming alkaline for a little while so it's better just to use what you need to kill off all the pests you you can so that way you don't have to do repeated sprayings here you can see this was the bottom side of a leaf that i had missed and i ended up pulling it off so I can show you over a period of time, these little black aphids that I had sprayed with the wetting agent. The point of this wetting agent is to coat them and the soap is also a smothering agent because there's oil and that allows it to get onto the insect, which then suffocates them to death. Most of these insects are hydrophobic, so they actually repel water quite well so just spraying them with a hose may knock them off, but it won't actually kill them. So that's why this wetting agent is so great because you're actually removing that hydrophobicness of them, allowing this moisture to get on them, and then it's suffocating them, and then they die, and now you have a healthy plant. So it's only been about three minutes since I sprayed it, and I can tell they're not moving, they're dying off slowly even with the sun beating down and drying this fast it's still uh, smothering them faster than the sun is drying it that's why it's best to do this when it's humid out especially early in the morning that way this can sit on the plant for longer it can coat the insects better and it will give it more time to kill the pests it's a little hard to tell but this ant is actually trying to get all of this insecticidal soap off of himself so that way he can start moving around and breathing. I'll probably end up having to go ahead and spray this again or I'm gonna have to bump up my dosing next time because you can see some of the other ants that got more of the wetting agent on them. They are trapped down and they're just suffocating but this ant must not have had very much on him so he is able to clean off the soap and go about his day. You can tell though, the ant is very unhappy having this soap on him and he is working pretty hard to clean it off of himself. That's it, it's as simple as that. All you have to do is spray them, watch, they're gonna die off and then go ahead and keep an eye on it. And in a couple of days, if any were missed or come back, go ahead and take care of those before populations really explode again. And then eventually you'll eliminate them and you'll have healthy plants. All right, spring is right around the corner. I have a lot to do, so I'll see you on the next one. Bye.